This is Marketing Jam, a podcast featuring the brightest minds in Canadian marketing. Yeah, sure. So I'm I'm Steve Koenig of Consumer Technology Association. I'm the okay. Senior Director of Research. So okay. who is CTA? Well, we're the U.S. Trade Association for Consumer Tech okay. in the United States, but we're actually doing a lot more here in Canada yeah. where we've taken up the mantle of uh, policy advocacy uh, for uh, the nation of Canada, and really our efforts are really wholly designed around preserving Canadians' right to innovate and making okay. sure that innovation is, is leading the Canadian economy. And that's okay. the same that we do in the United States. Wow. So uh, it's uh, kindred spirits, uh, and we're, we're pretty active, whether it's Ottawa or at the provincial level here in Canada. That's awesome. And what would you be most known for as far as the event that you guys put on? Well, of course, and, and thanks for asking, because we're, we're best known for CES, okay. which is held every January in Las Vegas. Okay. And just a, several weeks ago for the 2018 show, we had over 180,000 wow. trade professionals from 150 plus countries, wow. spanning about, give or take, 2.7 million square feet of space. So it's the global stage for innovation. Yep. It's a high level business event. There's no consumers, it's all business. Wow. And what's really interesting is that over the past, I would say five to seven years is really CES has really shed the, the reputation of just a, a gadget show. Yeah. It's, it's all about consumer tech intersecting with a whole constellation of industries and I would say almost chief among those is is marketing and that retail function and yeah. you know that's clearly what we're talking about here at DX3. Yeah, no, of course. So CES, um, of those, how many would be Canadians that come down there? Yeah, so thousands of, of Canadians attend yeah. CES yeah, yeah. And, and really that's the and from a country level yeah. perspective has always been for, for a long time because the show is, believe it or not, 51 years old. Started wow. in 1967 in New York. Wow. Uh, and so for the longest time, Canada has been the number two yeah, yeah. country behind, of course, U.S., yeah. but now I think China may eventually eclipse Canada okay. just with everything that's happening there in China and, and more reasons for, for Chinese companies to compete in the U.S., in Canada. I'm yeah. talking like Xiaomi, Huawei, Hire, yeah. Hisense, and, and all those usual suspects. So historically, uh, it used to be that South by Southwest uh, is where it is the place to launch your new tech device, right? Your new marketing tech piece. So like Meerkat launched at South by Southwest. Right. But now it seems that CES is the show to launch your new tech device. Is it, it seems to be the and trend. And has been, and has been. I mean, okay. throughout that 51 year yeah. history, yeah. we have monitored, give or take, yeah. you know, about 700,000 different products that have launched. Launch. Now, Samsung not all of their new device. Exactly. From TVs, also more these days, services. So all about hardware, software, services, all that connective tissue yeah. in there. That's what CES is all about. But to your point, yeah. really, as the global stage for innovation, CES is also where we have over 800 technology startups from over 40 countries. In fact, we curate all this in what's called Eureka Park, okay. and I mean, and it is incredible. I mean, think about 800 tech startups wow. from over 40 countries. Kind of like how PayPal has a startup zone here at DX3. Definitely, lower yes. Price, so you'll see brands. Yes. Yeah. So you'll see brands like Samsung, yeah. for example, these tech giant, Google, others yeah. that have kind of their startup lab yeah. and 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 incubators, yeah, if you yeah. like. So you'll see that, but you'll also see countries coming in and almost like a World's Fair wow. type dynamic like the Netherlands yeah. and the, probably the biggest of all is La France Tech. Wow. I mean France brings over hundreds like over 200 startups just from France wow. and we curate that all in their their area but you add it all up and that's really I think to me the true excitement of CES mm -hmm. is just the mind-blowing innovation that these startups mm -hmm come up with mm -hmm. and and it's really interesting some good examples are like in robotics really yeah. just driving that whole industry yeah. forward with companion yeah, robots yeah. we're not talking about toys yeah. but just yeah. a myriad of a, a myriad of ostensible use cases yeah. around these these robotic systems and yeah. so forth really interesting to see does Canada have a, a booth there in the startup area they they don't right now but I think I think that's coming I mean, more and more countries yeah. are coming into Eureka Park to say yeah. hey look this is this is what we're doing, so we would expect that. Yeah. Uh, the UK just recently started uh, their kind of zone, yeah. uh, and so yeah, countries are, are really lining up to to showcase their 
innovative startups uh, and tell that narrative at CES. Yeah, and you got groups like TELUS that have an innovation center in their new TELUS Gardens building, a whole floor dedicated to that. And That's the right. Canadian Innovation Council. So they're trying, again, I think our government's trying to spearhead and invest in, in people to develop new things. Well, and as I said, I mean, we're right there with them yeah. with our policy advocacy and, and working in Ottawa to, uh, you know, grease the skids yeah. uh, for a lot of these things to, to take root in Canada and then blossom, you know, really out in the global marketplace. Cool. How do you deal with um, the amount of like press and media that want to be at CES and, and want to, you know, cover these, these new launches? You know, is that part of a big part of the, the, you know, it's a big part of the, the draw to be at CES? Is, is sure. The exclusive you know, sight of it. You're always following you on Twitter and of course, you know, here's the top five things that launched at CES this year. Yeah, well, I, I mean, the media exposure is one of the big value adds yeah. for for our exhibitors, of yeah. course, and, and a lot of exposure. Yeah. We like to say there's there's more media coverage of CES than really the Super Bowl. Yeah. And in terms of total global yeah. impressions, yeah. Uh, it, it's it's really mind blowing. Mm -hmm. And and of course we have those those social media maps with the little hot spots, and you yeah. can see where things are trending. And yeah. and very interesting as the as the Earth circles the sun and and so forth, you can see things heating up. And yeah. uh, say in Australia, you know when it's nighttime here. Yeah. Uh, so so really interesting. It, it truly is a global conversation about innovation, and that's why we say it's the global stage for innovation. Yeah. But like over eight. 1,000 media uh, from dozens and dozens of countries come to CES. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing a lot more government officials uh, as well attending. Why? Well, because they, maybe they're the uh, minister of the economy yeah. or minister of innovation, yeah. something like this, transportation. Yeah. They want to come and see and witness yeah. these innovations for themselves. Yeah. So a lot more of a ministerial yeah. pre presence at a high, it's not just CEOs, yeah. but it's these these executives yeah. and high levels of government. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the current president of France, Emmanuel Macron, yeah. Yeah. he, before he became president, when he was uh, uh, in that ministerial function, he attended CES. Wow. So, so yeah, so that kind of draws a line under the, the types of, of personalities that are in play on the show floor at CES. Do you have, is Google and Apple, are they starting to do some of their launches at CES versus doing their own little private launches? So, yes, uh, definitely in the case of, of Google, yep. Apple always been that maverick doing their own thing and that's okay. totally legit. What a lot of people look at with trade shows, and I, and I think this is this is also true here at DX3, yeah. is that the the exhibitor, the show floor, yeah. you know, that's really the visible part yeah. of the of the show spectrum. Yeah. There there's a long tail of brands and and corporate entities from all kinds of different industries yeah. that are attending yeah. to see things. So, also brands that may not have an exhibit, say, but they have dedicated meeting space. Yeah. So a lot of the I would say almost 100% of the players in technology mm -hmm. are there, but more and more uh, brands in CPG products, mm -hmm. uh, service industries, yeah. etc. they're all there. Why? Well, because tech is just more and more woven into the fabric of our culture, mm -hmm. of business, mm -hmm. and again, like I've said uh, in my talk just, just a, a few minutes ago on the main stage here at DX3, mm -hmm. it, it's just really uh, intermeshed into that marketing function. Yeah. and, and What's what's neat about it is it's pretty fun because as consumers we get to experience a lot of these yeah. things too. Yeah. It was great being on the floor and seeing the work that Art and Science from Toronto does because I feel like they're one of the best best examples of practical how they've taken tech and made it practical for consumers and really made it so that it was engaging, interactive, and a way for consumers and retailers to really benefit. Yeah. yeah I, I, I've always been fond of saying that the consumers endorse options, but yeah. they abhor complexity. Yes. Yes. So so give me the options. Yeah. I'll pick what I want, yeah. but it better be easy or I'm not going to be interested. Yeah. So yeah, just exactly what you're saying. I know the next question will be a little bit hard because it's like, who's your favorite <laughs> child? But like, I, I read all the, the blogs and saw the news, okay. all the, 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 the great new tech you know, launches at CES, right in the top five or the top 10. If yeah. you had to pick one to talk about, what was kind of the, the one that blew you away the most this year at CES? Sure, well, it, it has to be very broadly artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the, the omnipresent trend, but to, to kind of drill that down a little bit, funnel that down, digital assistants like okay. Amazon Alexa, yeah. Google Assistant. Yeah. What's really interesting is that these digital assistants yeah. are starting to occupy more vessels. Oh, yeah. So smart speakers, yes, oh, smartphones, yeah. yes, oh, yeah. but autos as well. So what does this mean? Well, it's really quickly going to mean that no matter what we're doing, where we are, yeah. 
one of these digital assistants is going to have our back and is yeah. going to be there and accessible yeah, to yeah. us. And so what my big question is, the more that we talk to, say, Alexa yeah. or Google Assistant. Or Siri. Or Siri yeah, or yeah. Cortana. And, and actually, Who's the Cortana? narrative. Cortana? I don't know Cortana. Microsoft. Oh, Microsoft. They, go, yes. they got someone? They, uh, yes. And, and Cortana. It's, exactly. Kind of scary. Well, they all have these personalities. Cortana. What's Cortana like? Cortana is uh, very much like Alexa. Sounds like a, a, a fantasy novel, like Final Fantasy. Well, if you've got a Windows, yeah, yeah. If you've got it, it definitely, it comes from Halo. That's. Oh, really? That was the like little was an AI. Evil, an evil yes, exactly. Or a so they've. It was a very helpful, like friendly Jarvis. character. Like Jarvis. Sort of, yes. Like, like Iron Man's Jarvis character. You okay. got it. You Cortana got it. was in the Halo uh, Master yes. Chief. Yes, yes, Master Chief. Okay, yes, that's, that's where that comes oh, from. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. That's that's where where it thank, you, thank you, thank you. So you'd have to be, you'd have to be a gamer to get that, yeah. but uh, a lot of people are like, Cortana, that sounds like you said, very sci fi. I met well, a, I actually met a, is. I met a male Australian Siri yesterday. Okay. So Change their Siri voice to be a, a, a male Australian, which is, uh, yeah. A first for me. Consumers endorse options. Yeah. They abhor complexity. I just yeah. want to change the voice. I want to I prefer yeah. a man's voice yeah, yeah. or a woman's voice, yeah. whatever. Australian, a British yeah. accent, an Amer American yeah. accent, yeah, yeah. whatever you'd like. Yeah. But yeah, so we're having more conversations with these digital assistants. Yeah. My you, big question is, yeah. at what point do those conversations turn into relationships? Yeah. Well, my daughter, uh, I brought home a Google Home, and she's four, yeah. and she loves this song by Imagine Dragons, L uh -huh. Thunder and Lightning, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we should really ask my wife and I to play it, and we would find it on our Sonos device and play it on the Sonos. Oh, device. yeah. And then she found out that she could talk to this little orange ball and yes. say, hey, Google, play Thunder. And it would do that. And then it was on the weekend. I brought her home. And then I took it back to the office. And she was <laughs> sad. And on Monday, she's like, Daddy, where's my friend who played Thunder for me? Yeah. Because she had, a, her fr like she had a friendship with this little device. And, yeah. and what you're tapping into yeah. is really, if you want to get the gist yeah. of like, how is all this yeah. interaction with AIs yeah. and digital assistants yeah. going to play out? Look no further than our kids. Yeah. And in that example that you just gave, yeah. very natural. Just as millennials say, you know, we're, we're born with a smartphone in their hands, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the youngest generation now right. is going to grow up just talking yeah. to technology, asking oh, yeah. for what they want. And yeah. she probably plays that song over and over, oh, and, over, and, over and over oh, again, so right? Times, yeah. Play yeah. it again, play it again. And Alexa just launched on the Sonos device last week, so yeah. which is a big development. And, and I actually use Siri quite a lot while I drive to send sure. text messages for me. Sure. Which is, are you a Siri user? I, I dabble in just about all of them because right. you know in you my role, yeah, I need to. So, are so you an yes. iPhone guy? Or? I, I'm an iPhone guy. Yeah. Yes, what's your, iPhone. What's your top apps used right now? What's like your, your, oh, five, wow. your five most used apps, or your five favorite? Don't ask me most used, <laughs> but your five favorite. Uh, I'm a Wazer. Okay, you're way, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a Have you upgraded your little character? You've been collecting candy? <laughs> I've been collecting candy. I, yeah. I can't remember exactly what my, I think I've got like sunglasses okay, on. Okay, okay, nice, kinda, nice. Kinda I got cool. a rainbow coming oh. out of me, yeah. Wow. yeah. I, I aspire to the to the rainbow. Okay, yeah, one yeah. day, one yeah, day. Yes, but, but Waze and Weather Channel, I mean, I yeah. use that all the time for yeah. the weather. Just, yeah. what the heck, because, yeah. How, how often do the forecasters get it right, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. you're constantly having to check in. Yeah. Beyond that, I know here at DX3, probably everybody's like all over the entire social media landscape. Well, but not I, really. Everyone's different yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, so I, I'm way too old for like Snapchat. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So what are you, <laughs> but, are you, are you on Twitter, I, I'm, I'm definitely LinkedIn, yes, for you, professional, but, but I would say Twitter over, over Facebook. Are you a consumer or are you a producer on Twitter? I, I'm a little bit of both, bit you know. Okay, I, okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll that's one of the things, because because you know I don't want to just you know get, I want to get something back, and, yeah. and and Twitter and my network, you know, does yeah. you know there is an ROI yeah, in yeah. that with with following and. But Are you I, I tweet do, about this experience. I, I I've sent out at least a dozen tweets already. Yeah. <laughs> Did you bring your phone with you to this interview? <laughs> do you have it on you? Yeah. So so should we tweet right now? Should we, is that what we should do? We, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> So yeah, I should be I should be tw I should be live tweeting are, this. Are whole you on thing. Instagram? I mm -hmm. see that's the, I I don't do don't my wife okay. does Instagram. I'm, I'm mostly like Twitter, Facebook. Games? You playing games? I do. Pokemon? Do you try the Pokemon <laughs> thing or geocaching? Do you try those two ones? <coughs> I, I'm more of a game console, not more on, yeah, on yeah, yeah. a what, mobile what, handset. What console so do you play? I I play on a PS4, and oh, yeah. I'm, I'm right now all up in Destiny 2. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My so. son just got a PS4 for Christmas. Yeah, we, see, we I'm, I'm like a man child. See, is, I'm like no, a man no, child. No, it's all good. No, no, it's <laughs> I, actually funny. I was with um, the marketing director of Nintendo recently, and I was telling him how much my son would be would be such a fanboy of meeting him. He's 11. Okay. And he's like, ah, well, my <laughs> sons used to think that too about me until they became teenagers, and now they're on PS4. And you know, so it's 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 more 
for an older, so you're okay. I'm just trying to encourage you. Thank right. you, thank you, yeah. What's, what's the game that my son plays where you get dropped out of a ship? Fortnite, Fortnite, he loves Fortnite. Okay. And he plays with his buddies, and they okay. all connect, and they all play Fortnite together. Yeah, well, I mean, there's, so there's definitely with, with gaming, you can, a you, social yeah, it's totally you know, so, yeah. So, yeah, so, and, but, you know, what I hear, like, with, with parents, with kids, yeah. and, you know, they want to modulate that, like, hey, I get that, that's good, but also put the handset down and go outside. No, you know, and go outside. And, and my, the one thing I find fascinating, my son won't play by himself ah. very much, but he'll play when his buddies are on. Which yeah. I think is great, and I think that's nice part of the you know the social factor of it. Yeah. But then he'll yeah. go out and yeah. Yeah, and it can teach you know collaboration, cooperation. Yeah. You're you're yeah. working collectively totally. towards an objective yeah. and things yeah. like that. So, yeah. but yeah, but the the, the youngins like your son, I'm sure he he's probably killed me dozens of times on the Crucible where it's the yeah. PVP player versus player. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm not good at that okay. at all, at all. I, I'm, I'm about the Star horrible. Wars? Did you try the Star Wars one? The battle. I, I see. So just. You know, as a working professional, yeah. I have, and not an 11 year old kid, yes, yes, you know, yes. I, I have very limited time. Yes, yes. So, so yeah, I know about some of these yeah, games, yeah, yeah. but actually getting seat time with them, yeah. entirely different story. Yeah. But I'm, I'm interested. Yeah, that's, that's, there's always something new in okay. that content arena yeah. for sure. Okay. And usually it's a total time sink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or can be. That's awesome. Anything else that you want Canadians to know about some of the work that you're doing and, and something that they can look forward to this next year? Yeah, well, I would say, you know, just since we're talking about the intersection of tech and marketing, yeah. uh, some of the things that we're seeing that I've, I really emphasized in my yeah. talk is, is really three things. Mm -hmm. One is, you know, pay a lot of attention to what's happening with artificial intelligence. Okay. I mean, you, what we can expect, the thumbnail is, is, is AIs to, to increasingly take on different tasks within marketing. Maybe it's data analytics yeah. and, and adjustments in real time. We're going we're gonna to be delegating like we would today to a colleague. Yeah. We'll be delegating more of those tasks to an AI. Yeah. And so the idea is, again, the thumbnail is AIs working alongside humans. Yeah. Two other technologies that are supremely important yeah. for marketing. Yeah. One is AR. Yeah. It's going to totally revolutionize the mobile experience wow. from what we have today, which is yeah. you know head down, handset yeah, yeah. down, yeah. Uh, to you know head up, handset up. Like IKEA launched the. You, <clears> know, you got it. That's a great example. Room. Yes, yeah. exactly. Pokemon was just scratching the surface. I feel, but yeah. Totally. Yeah, and and a really very simplistic yeah, yeah. way, get ready for more like mixed reality yeah. where, where the Pokemon could interact with the physical environment, yeah. say. But you're correct, so revolutionizing retail, yeah. uh, and I think really, really quickly as these AR apps start to populate yeah. our phones, and probably next year we'll be talking about what are your favorite apps, what do you use a lot? Yeah. Well, I use this AR, I use the Starbucks AR app. Yeah. You know, when I'm in an urban area, I want to find that. Do you use the Starbucks you know, app, by the way? Oh, sure, yeah. It's awesome. I'm, it's all about the points. You know who has AR already <laughs> and has it for ages is Yelp has had it for ages. Yeah, you used so to be able to do this and look around. I haven't used Yelp in a while, but like used to do this and it could tell you where all the places were. Well, exactly. So it's been there, it's but been there. get ready for just a tidal wave of innovation thanks to development platforms like on iOS, like ARKit. Yeah. We're going to see a wave of innovation it's unfolding. It's done though so far is like a talking emoji, but that has not helped right. this world in any way. No, but consumers are... Like a are, talking poop? What has yeah, that done yeah, for that, you? Yeah, any, forget it. Nothing. Yes, yeah. 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 But, those digital bits yeah. overlaid with the physical environment, yeah. consumers are going to gravitate towards this. Why? Because it's really helpful, and they're going to count on those things being there. And if they have experience, if there are experiences where they can't get that, yeah. like say in a navigation context, yeah. in a in-store shopping context, yeah, yeah. they're going to go somewhere else. Yeah. Because why? Because it's helpful. So that's interesting. The last, the last yeah, thing yeah. That we've been talking about here at DX3 is the power of voice. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. We were talking about these digital assistants yeah. and and how. You know, kids are talking to them yeah. very naturally. Yeah. We're making inquiries and so forth. Yeah. Well, these digital assistants are very quickly establishing voice as the go-to yeah. user interface. Oh, yeah. It's game-changing and the killer app, if you like, for technologies like smart home. Yeah. No more, I got an app for this, I got yeah. an app for the door, I got yeah. an app for the lights, yeah. I got an app for yeah. the... Yeah. You know, it's all just Alexa or Hey Google and we can do all kinds of different things. Yeah. So, and also, therefore, in the device, landscape support for these digital assistants yeah. has become table stakes yeah your device has to support or service has to support alexa or cortana or siri whatever got to because if it doesn't consumers yeah. are very quickly not going to be interested why because it's so easy we're just talking it's like the plugs right 
we've conformed to what plugs into the yeah. thing. We don't have to get yeah. all these attachments to make our plug-in work. Right. Right. Yeah. When you so, travel internationally, or or the VHS, Beta, right? DVD, Blu-ray. Like it's everyone. becoming the standard for interacting with tech. Yeah, yeah. And what that's doing in a marketing and retailing sense is yeah. establishing a whole new sales channel. Yeah. The voice shopping or yeah. v-commerce, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's going to accelerate, I think, really, really rapidly because I think very quickly it becomes archaic to yeah. crack open our laptop, yeah. go onto a website, click around, yeah. mouse around a little bit with some keyword searches, and scroll around through. We're just going to ask Siri or. Alexa, send me a Cortana. The, our Cortana. Cortana. I feel like you need to say it like that. Cortana. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Uh, send me the the top five recommended or purchased headphones. Yeah. And so they'll just send it to you, and it, yeah, it'll appear on our device. We're like, okay. Or they'll get hmm. shipped that day, and then you return the four you don't want. Yeah. Or we're in the fridge, and yeah. you know we're we're out of milk, or yeah. maybe maybe beer. Yeah. Uh, Amazon's hey. got a tap button. Oh, well, see, and that, that's even quickly become outmoded. Oh, because yeah. now all we have to do, we open the fridge, we're down to our last Molson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, hey, Alexa, yeah. order, order more and yeah. then with, uh, with the same day delivery yeah. and, and, and personalized yeah. delivery service and so forth. We, you know, this is, this is how consumers are going to quickly uh, expect to live their lives. Yeah. Just asking for what they need and then it shows up. Yeah. I find that the QR code is a great analogy of things that I think some people I've seen on the floor and other places that people have created, but because people don't have to download another app, it, it, it adds another you know, hoop, another yeah. level of disruption in their life, or they have to do something that's not in their everyday flow, the QR code became quickly um, useless. Yeah, yeah. Right? It, was it was a little outmoded. Yeah, 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 yeah there was a lot of hype at the beginning, and, and I think Definitely. I'm curious to see as the dust settles a bit in the next couple of years, what are the QR codes that have been launching recently, mm. and what are the things that are going to become mainstream? Yeah, yeah and you know, uh, apps, at least outside of the, the usual suspects, yeah. <clears throat> You know, that could actually very quickly become an endangered species. Oh, yeah, because you don't have to download another app. I heard of yeah, a, a, another a, app and then having to swipe across and figure out where, where did I stick that app. Yeah. You're just going to click the button yeah. or just talk to Cortana yeah. and, uh, and, and ask for what you want. Yeah. And, and that'll be whether you're on your mobile device, you're driving in your car, yeah. Yeah. you're at home in the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, and when we start to overlay AI around this and some yeah. of the automation benefits yeah. and so forth, it gets even easier. So what does that mean? Like things uh, freeing us from the tyranny yeah. of the shopping list. Yeah. You know, we're con you know, oh yeah, we got to go to the store, we got to yeah. do all this stuff. All this automation starting to happen. That's why at CTA we, we say above all, what is innovation all about? It's about making life better. Yeah. And all right, I, there's some stuff that have, it wasn't announced at CES, but like that's naturally occurred, like uh, new software upgrades on mm -hmm. our phones. Sure. Like we now know automatically where we parked, and it tells you like <laughs> you've parked here, and we didn't. It, it was just a software upgrade that iOS put out. Yeah. Or or we get updates now. They're like, you have a meeting in 25 minutes. You should be leaving in five because the traffic is heavy. Right. Yes. Like, things like that that Google has done and Apple has done without even they just did it quietly almost like they yeah. created those kind of assistants in our lives. And we're going to see that very quickly port over to these digital assistants like yeah. that example about the, the pop up alerts on yeah. your phone. Yeah. We opt in for those things. Yeah. Right. Well, we'll be able to opt in and have say Google Assistant, yeah. maybe wake us up early. We've got a 9 a.m. Yeah, yeah. meeting. Yeah. It, it knows this. Yeah. It has visibility to our, yeah. our, our diary, our yeah. calendar. And so therefore, it's snowing. And Google Assistant, because we've said, please do this in this kind of case, wakes us up early because we're going to need to get started yeah. uh, a bit earlier to make that 9 a.m. Yeah. meeting. Or We'll say, hey, maybe we should reschedule this. Yeah. Things of that nature. More the predictive analytics. There's going to be snow moving in yeah. in, the, in the small hours of the morning. Yeah. Should we go ahead and push that meeting back or, yeah. or, or arrange a teleconference? Yeah. We're going to, that's where I, these assistants, we're talking to them and asking things, and yeah. it's a bit of a mechanical yeah. interaction today. I think very quickly over the next two to three years, that becomes as natural as talking with a friend, a colleague, our spouse. Yeah. And that's why I said before, at what point do these conversations become relationships? Yeah. They know us. They know what we want. Yeah. Some would say creepy. Others yeah. would say cool. No. Let consumers decide. And that's yeah. really what we're all about. You know, let let side, consumers decide. No, decide their balance. Right? Yeah. How much yeah. they want to rely on an assistant. 
Yes. Uh, if they want to stay disconnected. Same thing that we do with these these pop-up notifications yeah. and yeah. things. We we opt in, we opt out. I don't yeah. want that. Yes, yeah. I want that. Yeah. It'll 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 go down the same way. Yeah. That's really cool. I really appreciate you being here. Yeah, thank you really, so much. Yeah, yeah. really encouraging. I, I'm sure all everyone's learned a lot, and uh, thanks for making time today. You got it. Thank Cheers. you. Thank, thank you. you.